Scott Drew's top assistant has a new home. John Jacobs is on his way to FAU. This is an emergency Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, guys. Thank you for joining another episode of Locked on Baylor, the emergency edition. I'm your host, Cam Stewart from ESPN Central Texas. And kind of I mean, shocking news coming across the screen. This was reported by our pal John Rothstein, who was actually the sideline reporter in Memphis this weekend. Florida Atlantic is hiring Baylor's John Jacobs as its next head basketball coach. Send tweet. That's it. Baylor's associate head coach. Scott Drew's right-hand man is gone. He's off to coach a team that was in the Final Four last year in the FAU Owls. Um, you could kind of split hairs between Jacus and and obviously Alvin Brooks III, both associate head coaches, both uh, play different roles for Baylor. Uh, John Jacus is the X's and O's genius, so to speak, um, and has been, I mean, truly instrumental in in bringing this program to the elite status that it has or had, depending on how pessimistic you are. Um, this is, this is a, a big blow to Baylor staff for sure. Um, Jake has co- came in from, he actually actually started at Baylor as a grad assistant, then went on to Gonzaga and Mark few just raved about him. I think he was the head of basketball ops there and he came back to Baylor and, and I think it was after 2017. So he starts working with the guards then. And that is really what took Baylor to the next level was that guard play. You know, since he gets there, they, they have an all American in three straight years. They had Davion Mitchell and Jared Butler, both as all Americans in 21 at Kinjo in 22 Flagler in 23. Uh, and that, that is what rose Baylor to that elite status was having that elite guard play. You owe a lot of that to John Jacobs and, and the recruits he's brought in, both you know, national and internationally. Uh, you know, he's responsible for bringing in a lot of these guys, like a like a Sohan, like a Kendall Brown, like a you know a Jacoby Walter and Eve Meesey that we're watching now. Um, John Jacobs had a huge hand in that, and famously, he had the the scout against Gonzaga going into the national championship game. Um, he had obviously worked at Gonzaga for years. And I, I think it's, you know, like how they have the, the pro football hall of fame has Bill Belichick's game plan when he was the DC of the giants against the K gun offense, Jim Kelly and the bills and that super bowl, that scout for Baylor Gonzaga should be in a hall of fame in a museum somewhere because Baylor owned them on that night. Like nobody had that season and again, John Jacobs is a huge reason why he fills in head coach in that Iowa State game, leads them to that crazy victory after Scott Do- Drew was ejected. It, it can't be overstated how how tight knit this circle is with Scott Drew and, and his coaching staff at Baylor. And yet again, here's another assistant going on to to do bigger and better for sure. You know, congratulations to to John Jacobs. So happy for him, but. For Baylor fans, I, I gotta be selfish. I hate that he's not coaching at Baylor anymore. Like that, that is that is something that I think is a product of success that has hindered Baylor a little bit is seeing their staff go off and and do other things. Um, you know, we talk about not having the players that play together for a couple of years, and and that is a big part of it, probably the biggest part of it. But another one is having a coaching staff that's together year after year after year. And that's something that Baylor has not had since the national championship season with Jerome Tang leaving after the next season. And now John Jacobs off to coach FAU. Of course, their coach Dusty May went, went off to Michigan, but uh, this is, this is a budding program in FAU. And I think this is a dynamite hire by them. In fact, I thought someone like Oklahoma state would be picking up the phone to John Jacobs. You know, like like if Scott Drew had to have emergency surgery it, during a, a game day, John Jacobs would have been the head coach for Baylor. Like that, that's how high up he was. And so it, it's, it is surprising, although it shouldn't be. 
with the Scott Drew coaching tree becoming what it is. Obviously, we mentioned Tang. He's at Kansas State. You've got McCaslin, who is who is doing a great job at Tech. Uh, Paul Mills, who's trying to turn around Wichita State after leading Oral Roberts to the Sweet 16. Say what you will about Baylor's results in March the last couple of years, because I will agree with you in, if you're saying that it's not good enough. But there is still... All around the country, people trying to get a piece of this Baylor magic, trying to get a piece of this culture of joy and whatever Scott Drew has built here. They all want a piece. We saw it for decades with Mike Krzyzewski. Uh, We saw it in a smaller degree with uh, Tom Izzo or Roy Williams. And now we are seeing it with Scott Drew. And again, this is a team that was in the final four last year. And made the tournament again this year, which is tough to do for a school that size and with that pedigree. So, you know, Jacus might not have been there in the early days of the open tryouts and, and turning the team around back then, but he absolutely made this program or obviously helped make this program to reach elite status, reach national championship status, reach a status that we are now surprised when Baylor's outside of the top 25. It did not used to be that way, not all that long ago. So I I think this is a huge blow to Baylor. I'm not saying that, you know, they're not going to make the tournament or anything, but for a guy who who is that tied in and that close to your head coach and who is that good on the recruiting trail, when you're obsessively trying to get to the Sweet 16 again and need to replace four of your starters, that's a big loss. That is a big loss. And obviously wish them all the best at FAU, but man, that is a loss for Baylor. Um, anyway, let's get down to what your guys' reaction was. I was a little surprised. I was I was eating. I was eating dinner and uh, watching the Bruins, and I was like, oh, crap, crap. I got to go in. And do this. Scotty B says, at least he's not in the Big 12. That is that is a good way to look at it right now. Because obviously, uh, Scott's had a tough record against Tang. He's 1-1 one one against McCasland. Uh, that is that is a good thing that he's not going um, to, to coach in the Big 12. Aiden says, does this recruit... Does this hurt recruiting in any way? Yeah, you obviously put that up before I talked about it. So that's okay. But like, yes, it does. No, it does. Um... I think that is something that gets kind of slept on because he is such a good X's and O's guy um, in terms of in terms of the game plans and the scouting and all that. But absolutely, it, it hurts on the high school recruiting trail as well. Jacob says, Mike Boynton, you are a Baylor Bear. I would take that. I would take that. I, I don't know what his ties are to Scott Drew or anything, but as someone that Scott respects, uh, I will say... It's not something we've seen Scott do. Uh, it, it, it's not like, you know, you'll see football, especially like Alabama, the offensive assistants or the offensive coordinators, where they will bring guys from the outside who have, you know, a good degree or whatever, uh, men of good degree. But it, it's not something that Baylor's done. Um, but I think I think Boynton is a better coach than his tenure at Oklahoma State was, which is obviously a low bar. Um, but he did have... I don't know if it's him. I don't know if it's if it's if it's his wife. But if you saw his thank you video to Oklahoma State in his kitchen there, his dining room in the background, there's a big magnolia clock. I'm just saying. That's that's all. That's all I'm gonna say. Scotty B also says maybe Jake Lindsay or Quincy AC more realistic than Mike Boynton as an assistant. Maybe because those are family guys. Lucky there's family guys, uh, but th- they are within the the culture of joy and all of that. And that was, I, I think that is something that Scott looks at uh, as evidenced by someone like John Jacobs coming in. He was a grad assistant for two years, one of which they or two years that were successful in the postseason. They won the NIT in his first year there as a grad assistant. And then the next year they went to the sweet 16. So his postseason run is pretty incredible uh, across the two schools. So uh, that and Gonzaga. So that would be great, but especially the guards. So maybe it is someone like a Jake Lindsay to help out with the guards. I don't know. I don't know uh, Jake's resume right now. 
Brian says the death of Baylor has been a long and painful one. If this is the death, that's fine with me. <laughs> then, then I'm dead and out of this world. I'll, I'll, if this is the death, I'll, I'll take that. You know, I, I also hate that they don't go to the Sweet 16 anymore, but we do still have a fun time <laughs> most of the season. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's the death, it's better than a lot of schools' death, better than Baylor's death 20 years ago when they were a dead program anyway and got way deader with a humongous scandal. Um, and I wouldn't say it was all that slow or long. It's only been three years, if that if that is it. Uh, and he says he's not trolling, so, oh, boy. Um, Aiden says, doesn't Coach A.B. Alvin Brooks do most of our recruiting anyways? This still hurts me a ton. Hopefully we'll be all right. Yeah, I mean, Brooks definitely does recruiting as well and will certainly help in the in the transfer portal. Um, but but yeah, Jacus is still a very skilled, skilled recruiter. Um, and Jeremy says hopefully this uh helps the pivot to recruiting transfers more. Uh sure. Yeah, may, maybe that is a blessing in disguise, Jeremy. Honestly. Um if you're if you're looking at that, it kind of taking what I was saying, and I'm sure a lot of you thought as well about, you know, one and dones and how successful that can be. Um, that, that definitely did change. They were started getting those after they won the national championship, obviously. And, and with John Jacobs doing that. So, um, yeah, I could. And obviously I think Baylor's going to have to hit the portal pretty hard here anyway. Um, even with three top tier recruits coming in. So, uh, yeah, that makes sense. I love the suggestion from Ryan. Uh, slow and painful death, I will not agree with, but he says Cam Stewart to Baylor assistant coach. I'm right here, Scott. You know where to find me. It's your first listen today and every day. Find us wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube and on Locked on Baylor on Twitter. You know where to find me, Scott. I'm a joyous guy. All I do is elude joy, exude joy. I don't know how to use words, but I'm joyful. And I was a guard back in the day, listed at 5'8 now. Yeah, yeah, I could pull it. I'm liking this, this suggestion from Ryan. Cam Stewart, Baylor assistant coach. I'm right here, man. I am right here. Mm. I'm... <laughs> I am all in. Ryan also says, as a Oak State student and a Baylor fan, you do not want Boynton. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's one of those weird things where I do think he's better than that record, but the record is bad, and and that program is in is in a tough spot. And there were the you know the the sanctions and everything, Ryan. So it wasn't wasn't tough, but um, or it was tough. De La Fontaine said Jacobs recruited Keontae, Little, Misi, etc. You're right. You're right on all of those. And maybe this is the blessing in disguise that they start recruiting in a different way. I, I mentioned it on the show later this week. As much as I would love to sit here and be like, oh, we're done with one and dones. Can't do it. Can't win with them. It, it's easy to say that, but I don't have a great solution. As in, how do you stop doing that? How do you start recruiting a Jacoby Walter and then be like, oh, no. We're good. We're gonna we're gonna get the guard from Harvard. We'll be fine. You know, so I, I, I find that tough to to stop. <laughs> but maybe this is what stops it in that Jacus is was the guy who was 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 very um was very involved in getting those five star guys through the door. So maybe it's just hey, you know, Scott brings in someone else and says, We're keeping the recruiting budget a little lighter this year. Maybe that's it. Aiden says Miro isn't leaving, right? I hope not, but I have no insight on that. I don't know. I don't know. Miro is actually an interesting one, and and it's not his fault. I I, I really like Miro uh, as a player, and he was also a pretty nice guy to interview. Um, like I I like Miro, and I'm going to talk about this on the show probably next week when looking at some guards in the transfer portal. I'll give you a little sneak peek here of what I'm thinking. Is that I think you're okay with Rob Wright and Miro Little as his backup um, or or basically splitting time. But I, I think Baylor's run into a problem the last two years where they have not had a backup point guard. And I mean, really, th three years, if you go back to that Akinjo year, 
Uh, they, they've just been really thin at that position. And you have some guys who can handle the ball, but you really need a like a true veteran, screw you, I'm taking over kind of point guard. And, and Baylor has not had a backup one of those for the last couple of years, and I think it's hurt them a lot. Uh, so I'm interested to see if they do go to the portal, even with Miro staying, which I think he will. Um, but I don't know. I don't know about that, Aiden. Uh, I sure hope he does. I, I'm really intrigued to see what Jacus can do with FAU. Uh, because if you're looking from it from the FAU standpoint, they are a program that's relatively pretty young and is just experiencing its first dose of success. Uh, you have to get this higher right if you're FAU and you want to play ball with the big boys. This is this is your door is still open. It was way open with Dusty May, uh, but now now it is open to to really kind of make this a program, right? I'm not saying Final Four every year, but be competitive in that conference every year, win conference championships. That is one that that they that they have to get right. And I think they did bring a lot of their guys back from the Final Four team. So making the tournament is still impressive for FAU, considering what they are and where they've been before the Final Four. But... I did think they brought brought a lot of those guys back, and they were ranked at one point in the year and kind of fell off. So uh, you probably already have some talent there. You have a guy who's an excellent recruiter uh, in a state that obviously has a ton of sports talent, mainly football and baseball. Uh, but you can absolutely, I think you could find basketball talent in Florida. I I know that might be crazy, um, but that's an interesting to think about from the FAU standpoint of. This has to be our guy. This is, we need a sure thing here. And they looked at Scott Drew's staff because again, that coaching tree is just killing it right now. And to Scotty's point earlier, I'm glad in a way that he's not coaching in the big 12 because those guys seem to do well against Scott. But I think this is uh, not great timing from a Baylor side. Obviously can't, can't blame Jacobs for that. Um, but this is a team that's going to have a lot of turnover uh, in the starting lineup next year and one that is looking to get past this second round hurdle that it ha as, has not mattered how good they've looked in the regular season the last few years. They have not overcome that. You know, 2022, they were a nailed on one seed. And if they had stayed healthy, yeah, I think that would have been a Final Four team. But they weren't healthy most of the year and still played to be a one seed and won the Big 12 it didn't get past the second round. The next year, there were all kinds of holes in that team. They were ranked number five in the preseason. Um, we they never quite got to the level we thought as fans, or I thought as a fan they were going to get to. Uh, had some nice wins, sure, but weren't didn't look like a great tournament team. They lost in the second round. Then this year, which was up and down, but I think a lot of us were like, heck yeah, man, this team can go to the final four. It's not nailed on, but certainly they're going to get past the first weekend and they didn't do that either. So it, all that to say, it, it's an interesting time in this mini run here for the Baylor Bears to continue this thing, which I think they will. They'll continue to be a very good regular season team, but now you've got another major hurdle. You had it after Tang and you had a bad season by your new standards uh, in the year after Tang. And now one of Scott's right-hand men is gone. Um, and that's nothing against Alvin Brooks III, but they've had both of those guys as as the the weapons in their repertoire. So we'll hear more from Ty Beard, I'm sure, and Bill Peterson, of, as always. So anyways, y'all, I'm going to probably cut it right there. John Jacobs, FAU, good hire for them, truly, and wish him the best. He has meant so much to this program's rise. Uh, but tough for Baylor. Really tough for Baylor. Um, I did already record tomorrow's show. That's why I did came on and did this live. So we'll be talking a little bit of football in tomorrow's show. Richard Reese, you might remember him. You're going to remember him quite a bit coming up into this year. And Angela Kinsey went to visit the women's team. That segment is already on the YouTube channel that you're on right now, Unlocked on Baylor. And we will be talking about some other transfer portal targets some that you might be familiar with, some that Mike Boynton and Ryan might be familiar with. That's all I'm saying. 
That's all I'm saying. Let me know what you think about this hire or hire away from Baylor, I guess. Uh, drop that down in the comments below uh, how you think this is going to affect this next year's team. And, and going forward, will it tra will it change the recruiting strategy? I think that's something interesting to think about and was a good point out here in the comments section. So drop that down in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. Y'all are the best. And thank you for potentially making it your third or fourth listen today on top of your first, second, and third. I appreciate that too. We'll be back tomorrow with your favorite show, Locked on Baylor.